wow. Life is really scaring me now. I remember drawing this on my vision board. However, for me, I knew it would take 10 times harder to be here. Well, actually, 40 times. 10 for my color and 10 for being a female. Those two I was born with. 10 for my fashion sense and 10 for choosing not to go by a single title. Now, the color one I'm fine with, I'm exotic, right? However, I wish the world sometimes was blind. The female one is awesome. It means that I got to grow life inside of me. But we do live in a man's world. The fashion sense is my choice. It's my superpower. This piece of cloth means that I don't have to do my hair in the morning. <laughs> but it also means that I have the confidence to be who I choose to be, even though most of the world see me as oppressed. But it's that single title one is the one that gets me. Why? Because normally when you walk into a room, people will ask you, what do you do? Or what are you? And they expect you to say a single title like, I'm a doctor or I'm a lawyer. I was human last time I checked. <laughs> what they should be asking people like me is what we don't do. I'm a mother of five and a grandmother, come on. If they had more time, I would like to say, <clears throat> I'm a chef, an engineer, a lawyer, a teacher, a detective, a manager, a teacher and a creator. But people don't have time for that. And certain people like me can wear lots of hats or hijabs. Now, jobs and titles are part of a system I know. But is that how we measure success? By a job and a position? What about single mothers who are bringing up the next generation? Do they get equal respect? If I have to go by a single title, mine would include my creative gift, something that we're all born with, a form of art, because art is what it is to be a human. Now, think about children and their wild, crazy imaginations. We all have this instinct to create. Now, you don't have to be Michelangelo or Shakespeare. You can be whoever you want to be, but the creative gift is that thing that makes you happy, the thing that you can do for hours on end, the thing that doesn't require a paycheck at the end of the month. Now, I thought that my creative gift would include dancing and singing on stage. It wasn't like that. You see, when I stumbled upon a theatre company, that was using drama in a way unlike I'd ever seen before, my perspective totally changed forever. You see, they traveled to remote parts of Africa and they were educating women on how not to be abused by men and strangers. They would reenact real life scenarios but the results were amazing and the attacks on women fell dramatically. Now, this way of using creative gifts was changing lives. So I thought, OK, I'm going to go <laughs> and I'm going to talk and I'm going to go to the community and I'm going to ask them. But I got funding rejected over and over again. Now, this really hurt me. Because when you have been teaching for over 25 years and you can see that children are not engaged in education anymore, it saddens you. Life is learning. We learn to walk and talk and read. But somewhere along the way, it got lost. So sitting down and watching boring presentations. So, for me, I knew that I had some of the highest academic achievers. So I'm just gonna give it a go, I'm gonna give it a try. But what I found 
was that inside, even though they were making the grades, they were lonely, depressed, and some of them even self-harmed. But it wasn't just the pupils who were losing the motivation. According to the workforce survey from the Department of Education, a staggering 40,000 teachers resigned from teaching in one year. That's nearly 9% of the entire workforce. I couldn't give up. Now, it's not all bad, okay? You see, I had a mover and shaker and she believed in me. She gave me a small pot of funding. And she said, Anissa, I want you to work with a group of girls and build up their confidence. So I thought, what better place to put them than on the stage? I told them to choose a real life story that they felt needed to be told. And they chose a story of a girl they actually knew. This girl had gone through cyberbullying and unfortunately had taken her life as a result of it. They said her story was important to be shared so that they could protect others, but also send a dire message to the perpetrators themselves about the consequences of their actions. So really, this was a campaign using drama, just like that African theater company. Now, that same mover and shaker got us some press. And we smashed it. We were told by West End directors that you will never be able to do what you're set to do. What he was referring to was the five days that they had to not only write the script from scratch, but to make sets and costumes and props and rehearse and then perform to a sold out audience that they had marketed to. The best was yet to come. You see, the ticket money that they rose went to the orphans. This was using your creative gifts to not only change lives, but save many lives. I wish I could tell you that it was all up from there, but I did warn you that it would be harder for people like me, 40 times harder. But breaking barriers is actually in my DNA. I'm from a Jamaican background, and we are more than just the fastest runners on earth. <laughs> we are people that fought for everyone's freedom. But no matter how fast we ran, we couldn't run away from what was coming next. You see, my family and I, we were hired for our creative gifts. And even though we brought them much success, they broke their promises and broke our contract, which left us homeless, penniless. I watched my children spiral into depression as they watched me nearly die. They had to bury the baby because I just simply couldn't. I got divorced, became a single mother again, and that was just a few of the trials that I had all at once. But in this desperate attempt to heal ourselves, we started to use our creative gifts. Some wrote, some drew, and bit by bit, we started to put our lives back together again. Humpty Dumpty should have called us, not the king's men. <laughs> but what we discovered was what we have been doing for all these years was actually a science called neuroarts. 
Neuro arts is the study of how the arts can measurably change the behavior of the body and the brain that advances health and well-being. There's actually a study called the Neuro Arts Blueprint. And it shows how the arts can lower the risk of degenerative diseases, mental health issues, even trauma and addiction. It works on five principles, and here's one. Experiencing art is fundamental to being a human. Let me say that again. Experiencing art is fundamental to being a human being. A common thread across cultures, ethnicities, racial backgrounds, age groups, income levels, even skill sets because it's a shared language and it's a way of raising diverse voices and it's a catalyst for action. But you see, what we were doing was more than just neuro arts. So I dove deeper into my research and I found black creatives. Black creatives use creativity to make a positive change in the world. Now, some people might marvel in Shakespeare, a man who loved poetry and loved the theatre, and by combining the two, became known as the greatest writer on earth. I actually studied Shakespeare and got to perform at the Globe Theatre, but it wasn't a transformational moment for me. You see, I think that the people who use their creative gifts to change others' lives should be recognised. People like, for instance, Harriet Tubman, who use songs like Wade in the Water to send secret messages so that people can escape their freedom. And others, like Frederick Douglass, who's an author who is married to Anna Murray. He, after escaping his freedom, became a prominent leader to end it all. These people use their creative gifts, not just for themselves, but to transform the world. And in a time where our world right now is filled with pain, injustice and the need to transform, I believe that we should merge neuro arts, black creatives and humanitarianism. Because humanitarianism is that active belief in the value of all humans all of us. So, what's my big idea? I think if you want to transform your life and others using your creative gifts, we could be titled as Creative Changes. How do you become one? It's so simple. All you have to do is create. C, challenge. Find what it is that you want to change. R, release. Release that creativity. Don't be shy. E, express yourself. Anything. You could do drama, drumming, poetry, finger painting even. A, alternative. Think outside the box, dare to be different. T, take your time. Don't rush the creative process. And E, empower yourself. Dare to be different, but help heal others as well as the world. And like I said, those people who want to transform the world with their creative gifts could be known as creative changes. Because you know why? We are more than just single titles. We are complex, creative, unique human beings. In a time 
where the world needs to be transformed. So, next time I walk into a room and somebody says to me, what do you do? <laughs> I might say, I'm an educator that teaches creative changes how to use their creative gifts to transform the world. Thank you. <laughs>